Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Daily Dose of Dat. And in today's video, we're going to break down the damage survey of the EF3 tornado that tracked through Wynn County, Mississippi on February 12th, 2025. I don't really have a script for today's video, so we're just going to wing it and I'll discuss the damage indicators, where the tornado tracked and whatnot. And then uh, I'll just go further in details. We'll do a little radar analysis and whatnot. So, well, starting off at the beginning of the tornado's track, the tornado touched down along Pine Lynch. Pine Lane Ranch Road at EF0 intensity did minor tree damage to a few pine trees and then continued east northeast to along Highway 84 where it started to produce mostly EF1 damage, low end, a few outbuildings were damaged, power lines were snapped. But as the tornado progressed northeast, uh, northwest of the community of Whistler, that's where it suddenly peaked in intensity as it crossed U uh, Yukata Road. It did EF2 damage to a home right here. Complete roof removal and exterior wall collapse. The home was... Excuse me, high-end EF2. Uh, the home was bolted to its foundation, which is typically of the EXP classification, so that's why I earned a high-end EF2 rating there, with wind speeds around 130 miles per hour. But as the tornado progressed a little more northeast, that's where it really peaked in intensity as it struck mobile homes and did really severe tree damage. And we'll cover that in these few images right here. So the first EF3 damage indicator was this double wide mobile home that was completely just blown away. Like the highest degree of damage you can get here is around 150 miles per hour, which is what this was rated. You can see there's nearly just no debris left. And that's what led to this overall just being rated at the highest peak DI of the tornado, which was 150 miles per hour. Uh, as you go further along, you can see the framing of the mobile home here was wrapped around the trees nearby and just mangled entirely. And then also nearby, really gnarly tree damage. This is definitely the most intense tornado this year by da uh, based on the tree damage alone. Uh, completely just like 100% deforestation, uh, some debarking, but that might be due to reloading from all the mobile homes in the area. So it's questionable whether or not that was tornado induced or debris from other structures. But this tree damage is typically indicative of stronger EF3, maybe. I mean, this was rated 150, but just from past experience and looking at other surveys, this is around maybe a little stronger, but it's hard to tell just based on the debris loading uh more photos more debris loading against the trees that's why it's questionable to determine whether it's debarking from the winds or from the debris and now there's a drone image provided by the national weather service in mobile alabama showing that tree damage nearly just a hundred percent snappage and uprooting uh also in the ef3 category this is in a different area but in the same vicinity and if you zoom in closer you can see all the debris downstream i assume this is looking northeast but uh continuing onward more tree devastation of the ef3 category and here is just like in this general area is where the tornado likely peaked overall uh complete tree nubbing as well here uh not alone were they snapped they were just nub down to like the ground essentially which is usually really impressive for uh this part of dixie alley uh also very indicative of the ef3 category i believe this th this isn't ground scouring this is just uh mud and dirt from the whatever this cat vehicle is of sorts uh has gone another mobile home was destroyed here and frame completely mangled and there is actually ground scouring here this isn't from uh a vehicle of any sorts but this tornado became really intense here and scoured the ground while obliterating mobile homes and the frames were completely mangled which is not incredibly hard to do, but it is also indicative of EF2 and EF3 winds, which is, this is rated EF3 as well. 
And this was a motor home that was completely obliterated. The chassis is mangled. The debris was wind road of sorts. Tree damage nearby, impressive. Most branches snapped. Some areas are debarking, maybe. And overall, this area was really intense. Here's an aerial view of it from a drone. So the tornado is moving northeast here. And you can see this was either a frame home or a mobile home, I assume, the latter. And that was obliterated. Oh, yeah, you can see the mobile home frame here blown into the trees. And the, the tree damage here was probably also tornado induced, but I'm assuming the mobile home debris also had a factor in the overall losing of the crown volume of the tree. Another double wide mobile home here obliterated. I assume it's a double wide just based on the shape. Uh, and you see the motor home right here that was obliterated. Uh, it's hard to see what parts are what here. I assume the, the chassis is around here, and then the debris is blown northeast. And you see gnar gnarly tree damage, mainly just snapping there. That's likely in the EF2 or EF3 category. And you can see the debris also wind road here northeast. Uh, that's it regarding all the EF3 damage produced. That was in this little vicinity here between Yukata Road and Boyles Road. Later on, there was another area of EF3 damage just north of Leonard, Sh Leonard Street Road. Uh, I believe this was also tree damage caught by a drone. Uh, yeah, nearly 100% snapping up ruining. That's also indicative of EF3 winds. And the tornado weakened, producing mainly EF2 damage, and then it weakened back to EF1 for a little while. Continuing northeast, it then crossed Highway 145 north. Peaked at EF2 again briefly, just based on tree damage. Some minor snapping of... I would say minor. Pretty major snapping of relatively thin and weak trees here. And then the tornado moved east-northeast and dissipated south of Matherville. So. It took five days for the National Weather Service in Mobile, Alabama to rate this and did a great job thanks to all the meteorologists there for the hard work with this survey. And now we can go more into the radar analysis of this tornado. I overlaid the track of it as it touched down. So the tornado touched down in close to the Wayne Jones County border. And as the circulation moved northeast, <clears throat> it, uh, I'll turn on roads here. Yeah, it then crossed U.S. Highway 84, EF1 intensity, and then it peaked around 0150Z. This is about what it looked like at peak intensity on radar. That's when you can see the tornado debris signature pop up as it hits those mobile homes and other debris. And then it continues northeast. And uh, you can see the circulation isn't directly correlated with the path. That's due to radar tilting. And it just can use northeast. Peaked again at EF2 about here. And then it dissipated southeast of Matherville. So that's it for the radar analysis. This wasn't a traditional... Uh, it was kind of a... It, it was embedded embedded supercell within a line this wasn't uh, your typical qlcs tornado which this day was known for but uh yeah ryan storm chaser ryan show was kind enough to share his uh video his only video of the tornado i believe he's the only chaser that caught this please pardon uh the language in this i have bleeped it for content purposes On the ground! Oh shit. Big power flash! Big power flash in front of us! Tornado squads on the road! Tornado squads on the road! Power flash in the front of us! Holy sh! Big tornado crossing the road! And that's his video of it. I I don't know if I'm correct now. I believe he was somewhere in this vicinity. Uh, if he wants to, he can correct me in the comments. I forgot exactly where he was, but. Regarding the EF3 DIs, uh, those that were used were double wide mobile home, uh, DI27 hardwood trees, and I think softwoods were used as well, if I remember correctly. Don't believe there are any frame home DIs. Uh, regarding double wides, uh, 
they use DOD 12 moat for nearly all of them due to then the entire things were just destroyed they were obliterated there wasn't really any debris remaining especially for the first one right here and uh they went with the upper bound classification uh i assume mainly based on just the overall context of surrounding damage it didn't look like a particularly well constructed double wide uh, but usually NWS offices like to go with a lower or a higher classification for the wind speed based on surrounding contextual damage. And this one had wind speed, the contextual damage matched around 150 miles per hour for this. So they likely just went with the upper bound just to match the surrounding tree damage and ground scouring. And I mean, ground scouring is not an official DI, but you get the idea. And then hardwood trees were also used here. Uh, there was a lot of uh, tree debarking and a lot of just overall 100% complete snappage. Uh, so they would apply DOD 5 here, which is around 140 to 145 miles per hour. Uh, they didn't, no damage suggested to apply the upbound classification for this. Uh, so an EF4 rating wasn't really in question at all. And then softwood trees, uh, between, it was also DOD 5. But like, likely between the EXP and upper bound classification, I believe there's an area of softwood trees that was rated uh, low end EF3, about 140 miles per hour, I believe. So, yeah. I believe that's it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or have any questions about the tornado overall, uh, please feel free to leave a reply and I'll try my best to answer them. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one.